Mr. Dafoe, what a pleasure, what a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Uh, well, there's a lot of questions, okay. uh, but let's start with the Greek. Okay. <laughs> That's a good how, place to start. How on earth were you convinced by a first-time director, Vasilis Katsupis, to participate in such an unusual project? Uh, he had a good idea. Yeah. I liked how he approached me. Also, uh, the producer, uh, Yorgos Karnavas, was very um, good in how he approached me. They walked me through it. They were very patient. I couldn't do it immediately. They weren't ready to do it immediately. There was a big research to actually make the, the mono locale that this uh, film takes place at. Mm -hmm. It was a process. And uh, yeah, it was a leap of faith, but I liked these guys. And I liked the idea. And also built into the story, uh, also it's, a, it's got very little dialogue. Um, it's a one location thing. We were going to shoot in chronological order. There were many things that were particular about it and got my curiosity up. And I just thought there are many pleasurable things to do. We're, we have to invent some things. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. I, I'm interested enough in the idea that I'm good to go. I read somewhere that the original idea was that... Um, um, how do you escape from uh, such a, uh, you know high men's prison, like high security prison, but did the art come afterwards, the art, or was it intertwined from the beginning? I don't know, because uh, that probably precedes me in its mm. development. I think the art was there from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. And uh, th that is that is the uh, very, very interesting and intriguing uh, uh, prospect of the film. Uh, can we survive? Um, by art, is art as necessary as it uh, as food, <laughs> as food, <laughs> as water, as it is? It you know it purports. I, I, I'm not sure, and I, there's a lot of questions to be answered, or maybe not answered, but maybe. Well, the, uh, the beauty of this film is it's an open end film. Yeah, it does. It, it is, and and the audience can participate to make the film in their head. What's going on is very clear. And it's quite an active film, but it's also very meditative. So there's lots of room for people to ask their own questions. And his predicament is very evocative. And then his interaction, uh, when I say his, I mean the characters, his interaction with um, the objects and the house and the luxury and the art and the lack of food and all that, um, yeah, it, it raises questions. Have you had that uh, uh, question existential about art yourself uh, recently in the past when you began? Um, what is an artist? What does it mean for you to be an artist uh, compared to the, you know, the, the, the grind, the, the, the job of aspect of it? Uh, yeah, I think about those things. But, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, identity and being useful is very important to Mm -hmm. happiness, I think, at least for me. So sometimes you wonder how useful what you're doing is. Um, but then uh, at some point you got to let it go and say, well, it's what I enjoy. It's my particular um, passion. It's the thing that I, that turns me on. So I'm going to keep on doing it. And what it is, I, I'm not going to judge it. I'm going to just keep on doing it because I feel engaged and I feel alive when I'm doing it. Well, that's a fantastic answer. Um, tell me about the background of your character, which we learned. I know nothing. I know very little. <laughs> that's why I'm asking. And, and, but I will say that often I don't feel that's useful because if you, if you create a background, then you get this idea of constructing things and you start to put little pointers in your performance and you start to indicate and then you get yourself out of action you get yourself out of the reality you're out of the room i think the important thing when you make films and or you tell stories whether they're abstract non-narrative whatever it be in the room deal sure, with yeah, what's but, there but it's all about being present especially being this present, one. yeah and and if you're if you've got a whole story it's natural you want to pay that off so then you start to make choices and you say well 
he was abused by his father. So in this scene, when I pour the glass of water, you know, you're you're not there. You're you're laying a trip on people. And some people may find that creative and may feel like it's personal expression. But I'd rather have the experience, you know. Um, I, I want the experience of dealing with this stuff directly. Yeah, but it, uh, however, however. However, there's always a however. <laughs> that said, no, I mean, is it is it uh, useful in that particular film that Nemo, as we found out that his name is and, and credits, um, loved art and turned into a thief? Ah, I didn't even, even think about this. Maybe yes, maybe no. I think I think he 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 was he he was interested in art, but more importantly, he's a thief. Yeah. Uh, I think, that's the, uh, that's yeah. that comes first, yes. but he has some interest in art, and he, of course, there's this thing that is set in the very early uh, part, and then in the end, where he talks about art is for keeps. Mm. But that's kind of ironic, and it's kind of he's kind of being tongue in cheek about that too. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't think about that. It was it was important for me to. He, he's not an artist, but he likes to draw, for example. And in the process of being trapped in this, in this place, he starts to, that's his company. Those are his people. That's what he starts to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let, let me go back a little bit. Last time we met was <coughs> a, a very surreal experience. It was uh -oh. more than 10 years ago in Arizona. That was the uh, press, press junket for John Carter. Wow. And uh, wow. Uh, that, unfortunately, it was uh, not very long after the passing of Theo Angelopoulos. Ah, uh, so I asked you a question after all these questions about this film, about Theo, and you mentioned that the one thing that you remember is that when you asked him, how do I go from one place to the other and where will the camera be? He said, you mind your business, the camera is my business. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's like, I'm the camera, you're the actor. And you said, okay, okay, and you oh, did wow. it. <laughs> you know what? I don't remember that and that's kind of fun to remember. How did I forget that? Well, Early onset Alzheimer's, I don't know. No, no, no. Memory, <laughs> memory plays games. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, um, he was... He was interesting because what he loved to do, there was something of a language barrier because he, uh, we spoke in Italian together and my Italian was practically non-existent. I, my French wasn't there and my Greek certainly wasn't there and his English wasn't there. So he had a tendency to show me what to do. Hmm. And some actors that would drive them crazy. I loved it because copying, you can't really copy. That becomes the structure and then you accept that structure, and then as you're doing it, something happens to you, and then you personalize it, because it's your experience then. And I, uh, so that relates a little bit. He, 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 was, he was the maestro, and I was his clay. And I like that relationship sometimes, when the guy really has something going on. And Teo definitely had something going on. Mm. God, uh, but you, you rest are... in peace. Um, you are uh, an actor uh, par excellence, as the French would say, meaning that uh, I cannot find the right word. You, you submit yourself to the service of the material and the still, auteur. The for author, me, it's the, the only way to be. And The only and, way to be. Yeah, I think flexibility, it's more fun that way. Because I find I have the best time when I have nothing to protect and I have nothing to sell. I, I tr you know, it's maybe, you know, in its degrees, maybe I don't give myself fully. And when I hear myself say that, I think, well, maybe, you know, it makes, it sounds too grand, too, ge too generous. But in theory, I like it because it, it takes you away from yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say away from yourself, the self that you've instructed and you've constructed, and usually the construction you've made is imperfect. And when you go away from that, you can explore different things that this constructed self doesn't let you explore. So then you have an experience and you can come back and that can have an impact on that constructed self. And you can be suspicious of that constructed self because that 
is the thing that will kill you. I mean, that's basically ego. That's basically, yes, you need a healthy ego, but I mean, a kind of set in your ways or, or, or when you stop uh, questioning, mm. when you stop being curious, then you might as well be dead. <laughs> so so that, that kind of submission allows you to fly a little bit. And, and get away from, you know, the business of, you know, living your life and kind of go beyond that. Um, the, if I try... I get really started fl- going crazy there. <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, this is the nature of, uh, the schizophrenic nature of, of actors. They have to have the, the ego struggle with the uh, a medium... Um, by a, by somebody else, by a director, yeah, yeah. by a collective um, organism. But that's fascinating. What's also fascinating is that I was trying to find a link between the three Greeks in your cinematic life, which is Vasilis Katsupis, Theo Angelopoulos, and Nikos Kazantzakis. And you're missing someone, Yorgos Lanthimos. Which is absolutely true, and I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've just worked with him a second time, too. Oh, and very happily, too. Oh, on yes. Hand. On yes, somebody end. told me, yes. Yeah. I think Miss Filippo told me, actually. Yeah, yeah. Let's take Kazantzakis. What has he taught you in that experience? Kazantzakis is difficult to talk about because, you know, I, of course, I, I, I read Kazantzakis and I did a movie based on his very uh, well-known novel, but I don't feel so knowledgeable about him because I didn't know him personally and I didn't Yeah, sure, him. yeah, he's worth um, But I guess the, the three that you mentioned... They all have a kind of um, cultural education that is quite profound. They mm-hmm. know a lot of things and they're able to connect them in not a uh, you know studious or academic way. It's it's in their blood, you know, and maybe it has something to do with where uh, Greek culture sits or where Greece is politically, you know, in the overall scheme of yeah. Uh, entertainment and art power and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But there, you've mentioned three people that are, are very strong personalities. Uh, and there is a link, but I, I, I hard pressed to say exactly what it is, except for they're all quite, um, I can only say cultured, you know, they aren't like, sometimes there's some people in, particularly in, in American cinema, that they're just obsessed with film and they know nothing outside of film. <laughs> yeah, it's like nerds. And there's in, no in connection. The system, they yeah. don't know about dance. They don't know about um, visual art. They don't know about music. A guy like Yorgos has an incredible depth of knowledge of all these things, and it all comes together in this work. Willem, thank you so much. Sure. And uh, I'll see you in Athens. Okay. Eventually. See you there. Thank yeah. you.